Hello everybody, my name is Jason and welcome to the first episode of the Dragon Age Retrospective Podcast uh, where we play through uh, certain sections of Dragon Age Origins and then do a quick podcast to talk about uh, what we just played. Um, obviously, um, I'm X0 or Jason, Just let's just make it easy to, for everybody. Um, I've in my introductory video, I've explained that I am a crazy, huge Dragon Age fan uh, since the original, um, to, ex to the extent where I have all of the external, actual published books, and I've been a massive fan of the game since. Uh, with me, uh, I have a good friend of mine and fellow Dragon Age fanatic, uh, Dem. How you doing, Dem? All right, all right. Um, so my background of Dragon Age is I... Like when I was younger, I definitely played Dragon Age Origins, um, but it was it was something I forgot quickly until I bumped into Dragon Age Two again later in life, um, and I just became obsessed after Dragon Age Two, and I had to, you know, replay Dragon Age Origins. I I don't know how many time, times I played Dragon Age Two, um, and so Dragon Age Inquisition was then the most other most exciting thing that came out after that. Um, yeah, like Dragon Age Origins, I think is like what probably one of the strongest games in this season like like jason and i have discussed this so many times about our thoughts on all the different games but we love dragon age origins we think it's yeah yeah quite underrated much. honestly i think honestly yeah i think i think you and i mutually came to the conclusion that of all the three games of the three dragon age games that actually exist currently we're not obviously not talking about the fourth one that's just recently was announced um, that Dragon Age is the most Dragon Age Origins is the most complete package uh, as yeah. as a game. So I think I think um, I think it's obviously it's also a great, kind of great way to kind of start a point. It's a, it's a relatively simple game to play. It's straightforward. It's easy, and you know what? It it kicked off the entire thing. So why not do a playthrough of it, as it were? Um, all right. So oh uh, yeah. So let's kind of, let's kind of start the topic here now. Uh, the first thing we kind of want to talk about is, is I've split up the sec I've split up the games uh, split up this game specifically into different sections that we are going to complete weekly at the very least I'm hoping for this to be kind of like a weekly podcast type thing um, first section I cover I decided because all of these sections are kind of relatively short um, obviously they kind of pile up when they're put together but I figured we can get this done and done ASAP um, just covering the origins uh, the the which is was a unique feature of this game at the time, uh, the first kind of section um, Osaga, and uh, the third section uh, Loathering. So uh, let's kind of jump into it. Um, first thing, uh, first thing I will say, I specifically went for a male human noble, uh, the Kuzland, um, just because I personally think that with how the story is set up and how and because origins the origins of the game tend to do kind of like kind of do throwbacks to it essentially uh throwbacks to the origins you pick i think it is the seemingly the most canon um of the origins yeah of, uh, frankly definitely definitely and i don't and i don't as generic as it is i don't find the story with the origin itself bad um then what did you end up going um, I chose the Maharial background because I'm absolute garbage for playing elves. Um, and just especially... double checking, that's the Dalish Elf, right? Yeah, the Dalish Elf. Yeah, so that's the Dalish Elf origin. Um, I think that one, like, going off what you said about the, like, the human noble origin being just linked throughout the entire game, I would argue that the Maharial one is linked, like, least. <laughs> That one Kinda. rarely comes up um, ever again. Like maybe once or twice, but and if, despite it being Bioware's canon playthrough, I feel like that was an afterthought. Um, it, yeah, it. Mm. Don't get me wrong. Like it's. I think it's fantastic. I love it. Like oof, it hurts me good, but um, it's not very linked to the rest of the game i think i think mostly they decided to, as a, as its canon playthrough specifically because of how it's linked to the rest of the dragon age series as a whole not with origins like yeah, okay. 
I th uh, just because I think I think they really like that connective tissue. I mean, they, it introduced the Alluvians, which come, which is a kind of a yeah. big plot point in Dragon Age Two and, and Inquisition. That's um, so true. The set, it linked got... it to the clan in, Dra in Dragon Age Two, of yeah, course, that's as right. well. That's right. So look, um, let's before we go into kind of the kind of in-depth discussion on this, let's kind of do a brief rundown um, of what our origins end up being. So essentially, the Kuzlan origin is um, being a human noble. Um, you've kind of created. You've got your own kind of military force or an army. Um, because you're a noble, you've been recruited by King Kalen, uh, King of Thetis at the oh sorry, King of Ferelden, I should say sorry. Uh, King of Ferelden at the time to help to help deal with the potential blight uh, at the time. Uh, you've already sent your forces when a good friend of your family, the Howes, or specifically Alrind and Howe, um, and his forces uh, were yet to arrive. So, you know, you spend the origin, um, spend the origin just wandering around your castle, gathering praise, you know. Uh, you've specifically been told you're not going. Because you need to look after the house or the castle, I should say, and that's um that's honestly where you meet Duncan because he's looking for recruits among the nobles. Uh, obviously, um, you do a couple of other things, including killing rats and recruiting the best party member, uh, Doggo. <laughs> um, uh, uh, unofficially, the canon name is uh, Barkspawn <laughs> as as um as discovered and played through it by uh the darkspawn the, the darkspawn chronicles dlc no, but as a joke um because i played the game on stream i named i named i named the dog after a friend who was also in the stream chat at the time so <laughs> um yeah at that point at which point um after everything happens um how Al Rendon how betrays you um, because he seeks power um, he decides to butcher your family in the night while your armies are gone and Duncan escape uh, Duncan helps you escape uh, essentially uh, so uh, so kind of a basic kind of really straight basic kind of revenge slash justice storyline uh, what, how did, just as a reminder, how, what kind of the bones of the Meharial storyline, the origin, as it were? Um, so the Meharial origin begins while you're out hunting with your um, clan mate, Tamlin, um, and you run into some humans. You then get to sort of make the decision what you're going to do with them. Um, let them live, kill them all, or kill a few, you know, your choice. Um, and... From there, they end up revealing that they found this, you know, mysterious cave with all these elven artifacts. Um, and naturally, um, both the, the two characters, your character, um, can be. And um, Tamlin is intrigued and wants to go investigate what's going on. So you go into this cave, have a look around. You come across this mirror, this mysterious mirror, mirror after getting intense bad vibes throughout the entire cave that something's not right. And it's, yeah, it, it's so interesting playing this game back its origin back after the other games there's a lot of things you miss anyway um tamlin touches the mirror if something explodes or something it's never quite you know you never quite know what happened it you know fades to white and black um and then you wake up in the camp and tamlin is missing and the duncan was the one who rescued you at that time so then go back investigate what happened in the cave and uh just kill some dark spawn essentially and then duncan enlists you <laughs> it's yeah it's really quite compact Com compact yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that's yeah because i've um obviously there's a lot of kind of connected tissue with specifically with that background with the rest of the game but the game it's in the origins itself there were there really isn't too much to it like it's a mm. solid storyline there's a good intrigue i do believe that um, he initially re he recruits you because you've been tainted or or yeah. corrupted by the Alluvion, um, by the uh, yeah. corrupted mirror, as it were. Uh, so just as a kind of a cure there. So you'll find you'll find just with us two, as long as with the other origins of which another four are available, you essentially 
given no choice but to accept an invitation to the Grey Wardens. Yeah. Um, just to cover... Yeah, and I actually I actually tried to exhaust all these options. I was like, I was really trying to role play and I was like, you know what? No, this character wouldn't want to leave her clan. I'm not going to do it. And in the end, you have no choice. He, yeah. she, he, Duncan, I love him. He goes, I'm going to take you there, kicking and screaming if I have to. You will be joining the Grey Warden. Yeah, basically. <laughs> That's kind of how it's love the rest him. of it. Like, I recently saw a post on... Uh, I saw a post a little while ago on the Dragon Age subreddit that basically told Duncan is, like, kind of an asshole Because you get yourself... <laughs> Uh, you get yourself into like a situation where you basically have no choice. He asks you at a point where you have no choice but to accept. Like, she is ruthless. Yeah. Um, especially in the human origin. I am not going to let you... Is Essentially, I am not going to save your the, your sole remaining heir unless he comes yeah. into the Grey Wardens. Uh, yeah. So... <laughs> I get, I get that, I get the post, um, <laughs> but yeah, obviously yeah. we obviously find out we obviously find out why he is so desperate to get a great warden kind of later on anyway. Um, yeah. So that's fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, look, just for um, just to cover the four. Uh, so I think we chose. I think we chose kind of the most kind of interconnected, just because the daily shelf is the most connected throughout the entire series. Um, yeah. With human noble being the most connected in origins itself uh the other ones are just not so are not as connected um there is the dwarven commoner which has kind of an interest which has kind of have an interesting um interesting interesting kind of lead in lead in there relatively kind of fine storyline mm. it's it's fine uh the the what the city elf which is kind of dark um yeah it's yeah, definitely i would issue it is it is kind of while it's not exactly explicit anything i would kind of almost kind of want to put kind of like a little slight trigger kind of trigger warning on that just because of certain aspects of what happened in that story um mm. they do not they do not kind of sugarcoat kind of anything that happens there i'm not going to go into it feel free to take a read of it yourself if you haven't played through the game or don't remember what happens. Um, there's also, obviously also the mage, um, which was the mage origin. Human, that's human. That's human or elf. Uh, yeah, I mean that's uh, that is a fine storyline. I think. I think I'm very mostly. It might just be my bias because the other of uh, the other those kind of three origins. The city. The city elf is kind of revenge fantasy, dark revenge fantasy the the dwarven commoner is just kind of like the criminal the criminal that had no choice a, a, a mm. kind of a criminal that had no choice my despite human noble despite the human noble being my favorite though i have to admit the most motivating origin is the dwarven noble that is the biggest revenge fantasy origin you will have in your life do you remember kind of what happened there I've never actually played that one. All right, so what, that okay, one. so you are you are an Itukin, actually. So if you remember what happens later on, you're actually the one of three brothers that are set to inherit the Dwarven throne um, when your father when your father is set to die, uh, and which I, which he's currently very sick at the, at the moment. So there's a lot of kind of intrigue going. You do you do kind of a short proving, which is kind of like a gladiator tournament that the dwarves have, um, and then you find you find out, and then you find out from your younger brother, uh, Balin, that there's something going on. There's something kind of suspicious going on that you he's you telling you that your other brother, uh, Trian. Or I, I believe his name is Trina, I've, I've forgotten the exact name, uh, he's going to betray you, and he's going to try to kill you so he can ensure his throne. Because apparently you are the more well-liked brother, despite mm. him being... despite your <clears throat> the other brother being the oldest. Okay, so you decide to kind of, you know, be preemptive. But by the time you found Trian, he's dead. It turns out you've been set up by Balin, your brother, and you are about, and you are set to be executed. 
now doing this obviously during the proving and a bunch of all this sort of thing is where you meet duncan uh you've had a quick conversation because he's a great warden on all of that and then but at one point but instead of being executed for essentially um killing your brother which you didn't do you are exiled to the deep roads and there's one just one advisor there your one advisor who believes you so he convinced to give you an exile and so you can find duncan and the rest of the gray wardens so you can escape it might it's a bit messy i explained it kind of a bit messily obviously because I can't, I'm kind of doing kind of a bare bones thing of what I can remember because I've basically played only the human noble origin for so long, but it is, it is the most fascinating because, yeah. And I feel like that, like from what you were saying, like that, that is, um, that I think it genuinely links up throughout major plot points within Origins, the Dwarven Noble. I feel like that's like the most interesting, like summary of the main Dragon Age things, like the Darkspawn, the, um, I'm assuming you get, oh, I'm not sure. The Grey Wardens, there's a political intrigue, yeah. There's... Yeah, I've, that's so interesting, it's quite compact. Yeah, it's, it's, um, I kind of want to go on this later, but, like, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of like a nice kind of small, mac kind of microcosm of, like, the Dragon Age games themselves. <laughs> yeah because it's a little political it's a little it's a little fighting there's a lot of conversations going on here so yeah. you kind of really and that's what dragon age that's yeah. what dragon age does really well i think the the political intrigue yeah they that's that honestly that's some kind well of the best throughout. part of the game sometimes yeah uh, it is fun apps it's great um but yeah so look that's kind of a brief rundown now um, there's obviously um we we mentioned earlier there's always going to be a lot of callbacks to that um, that's because you actually see NPCs related to your, um, related to your characters as you go along, as you go along. And in fact, you run, if you, once you pick a particular origin, you can actually figure out what happens to the rest, to the rest of the actual characters as you go along. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't pick my, if you don't pick my character, the human noble just dies. The... We just get the cousins just get wiped. Um, obviously, you guys. Obviously, the material just dies to the taint. Yeah, um, and that's mentioned in later games. Yep, yeah, the dwarven noble I was just talking about. You just die in the deep roads um, because you were exiled. The dwarven commoner who ends up being imprisoned. They just die in the prison, which you can actually come across. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a nice touch. The city elf. The city elf, obviously doesn't make it um because duncan doesn't save them um later on what about the mage origin though like sorry just you go on but what about the mage origin in terms of how we come across how their or their failed origin later on i th i from what i remember i think you literally just get like executed or um, yeah or made tranquil the... one of those two it's not yeah. that you, you didn't it's not that you didn't fail the harrowing it's because you aided a malefica Ah, of Which, and the NPC from that shows up yes. later on. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Dwarven Noble also, the Dwarven Noble, um, just because we're not playing, I'll, I'll say it now. The Dwarven Noble NPC that helps you is uh, the Dwarven, the Dwarven Cellar in Denerim. The... Oh, Dwarven okay. Crafts, fine. Dwarven oh my gosh. Crafts. That makes so much sense as to why people are obsessed with his character. Because I've no, never played the good. Dwarven He origin. loyal. He loyal. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that's kind of, kind of explains what happened um, in regards to the origins. Look, it's honestly, honestly, they're all kind of great to play. Um, mm -hmm. Just as a story point, like, obviously, and the world interacts with you differently depending on what kind of race you are. Yeah. All that stuff. So... Honestly, the biggest feature of the Dragon Age is the biggest kind of success for me. Just being able to kind of flex what kind of where you want to play, what you want to do, is yeah. great. I love it. Um, and the cool. world is so, and you are so right. The world is so responsive to who you are. Um, like I know we're we're just talking about origins, but I think that Dragon Age Two does that 
really well. Oh yeah, well. absolutely. Does. Like in terms of choosing your class, like it's interesting. Like um, in Origins, it's very detailed. Like your class and your race; these are major things that you know affect how the entire world like, like reacts to you. Dragon Age Two, it's predominantly just your class. Well, obviously you can only choose one race, mm. and then Inquisition. I mean, in my opinion, it's slightly less, but like you know, we'll, we're only focusing on Origins at the yeah, moment. Yeah, Inqu- we'll get to Inquisition. I think they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to Inquisition. Believe me. Um, oh yes, <laughs> we've got thoughts. We have thoughts. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, look, I think I'll I'll just I'll and you know what I'll kind of say our related. Um, we'll kind of I'll say it now because he's kind of interwoven throughout the rest of the story. The Dwarven Noble um, MP. Uh, sorry, the human noble um, NPC that kind of is a, that's reoccurring for you is Al Howe, which becomes important later on. Um, I do believe the Meharial NPC comes up as a later comes up as a later thing, but we'll have a. Yes, he does. I think we'll just kind of leave that kind of for now yeah. until it happens because. Yeah. That I'll is bring it up that, later. Don't worry. Oh yeah, you will. <laughs> that's uh, that's something that happens. That's just something that happens. Um, mm. which is interesting, but you can't really avoid, we can't really avoid it, uh, how being you know, a character yeah. that exists. Yeah, it's fantastic. I was like, I think that's what makes the human origin, um, so special. Like it, the story is just so interwoven throughout that it really makes it feel quite personal the entire game. Yeah. Cause otherwise he's just like a random guy that. Mm. Just yeah, a, that's so true. It, I remember random. the first time I played there, I was like. All right, I'll kill him, but like, okay, oh, what do I care? But yeah, it actually has so much more impact with the human noble. Oh yeah, absolutely. By the way, fun fact: <laughs> I didn't realize true. this. I didn't realize this for like the longest time because I didn't recognize it. But he's he, Rendon mm. House played by Tim Curry, and I, I was just shocked. That is amazing. It's like so good. the range. It's <laughs> so good. You have no, you have no idea. Like, what, you have no idea the satisfaction you get um, when when you actually get to oh, how It's so good. Um, yeah yeah that little those dragon age dragon age is so good with the kind of extra lines that kind of exist there um especially when tying it back um speaking of which um which the neck the kind of that as for the human noble at least the first kind of interconnected line shows up in our next section the first bit of ostagar um Mm. duncan brings you to ostagar and king caelan um just kind of swaggers up because he's excited to see Duncan again um and like we, again first point of interaction he says hi to Duncan um in for every other noble he just says hey you you must be the new recruit um yes. blah, blah 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 and and you know you do the whole introduction thing and then but with the human noble he just says hi no need for introductions you're Bryce's youngest uh which is your father you're Bryce's youngest right I've seen you around but like, oh how you been? Where are your father? Where are your forces? And it's just like, how kill them all? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, in the human, uh, other anything other than that, um, King Kalen, if you can obviously decide to be cordial with him, uh, which doesn't kind of reveal. Honestly, it doesn't do too much. Essentially, and with whatever happens, uh, if you, essentially, if you decide to stay cordial, he'll just say, "Okay, great to meet you." Blah blah blah. Fine. Um, but this, it, not even being specific with the human noble, if you decide to tell him what kind of led you to kind of needing to join the wardens in the first place, like if you're like completely blunt about it, he'll make a promise to help you. I think, and he is such a lovable NPC. They de- they wrote him so well. They like it's not hard to love King Kalen. They wrote him, and it was intentional, clearly. Yeah. But it's very easy to just love what a kind-hearted and good and yet naive um, leader he is. Yeah, no, he's. I mean, he's 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 us, essentially. Yeah. He... Just getting out. I don't know if I don't know if you guys are like huge fans of anime. He's basically like a guy. He's basically us implanted as a fantasy character. It's just like I want to go to these stories. I'm the king. I'm That's super cool. That's so true. That's so true. And like, it's it's obviously within the context of the game. It's just absolutely heartbreaking because yeah, he is so innocent. Like he's he's got these stories in his head that 
you know he wants to try and recreate yeah and, and that's kind of the yeah. first thing that's kind of one of the first thing he mentions when you kind of get introduced to him right it's just like i was hoping like i was hoping for a fight like in the fairy tales yeah or like in the, in the tales. <laughs> and so, not wanting to wait for um oh my gosh the allegiance Arl Eamon. not wanting to wait for the Arl's reinforcements because he's like ah or the i've done Olesian. it like a thousand times before oh yeah or even the allegiance or the allegiance wardens yeah yeah um, yeah <laughs> But yeah, so look, um, so after the introduction, you get free roam of the Osagar camp, and I think this is kind of like a very good beginner area to get you sent. Obviously, he's given you, uh, so once you get to the camp, you are assigned to do a couple of different things. Find your companions uh, for that section, uh, that being Jory, uh, Alistair, and Davith. What's the other one? Yeah, that's it. Davith, that's yeah. it. So find them, get bring him to Duncan. Now... Use this opportunity to kind of like, um, to actually learn how Dragon Age works. Um, mm. you, the first thing you do probably is go to the, go to the merchant. Um, as that's one of the first things I did. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for, if you go, first thing to go to the merchant, buy some stuff. But if you decide, but if you decide to talk to him about other things, he gives you like a different store uh, with the different mm. items. So it gets, it kind of gets in the idea, okay, conversation is important. It gets yeah, you access yeah. to different things that you might not have access to. Yeah. Um, and that's just going back on that, 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 that's really true. And that was a mate, that was a big thing in the Meharial origin, the um, elf origin that, yeah, like you only got access to certain chests because you had to get certain keys from people and you had to have that whole conversation about you know, asking how your parents died and like, it. Was, but I think an interesting thing about the conversation within Dragon Age Origins that I've noticed that I think happened less in later games was that especially within that origin story at the beginning, you, you were given all these different options on what your past was like. Whereas I think you do get railroaded a little bit in later games, but this one, it was like, you know, Tamlin will ask, oh, why are you here with me? And you had every option be like, oh, because I wanted to be here, because it was punishment, because I was sent to help. Like conversation is like crucial in Dragon Age Origins and you can make what you want of it. Um, yeah, yeah. See, I, that's why I kind of, that's why I really liked uh, the silent protagonist in, in Origins. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Sarcastic Hawk is the best character. He's oh, the best Purple character. Hawk. But so I good. love Purple Hawk. Yeah. <laughs> but if you had played any other reason, everything just ramps up so fast and his all and his chat because of the chat wheel introduces everything, feels like everything in extremes. You mm. get you're given maybe like three options and then maybe kind of like an investigate kind of yeah. thing. That's it. here in Origins, depending on how much there is to talk about or how specified this specific interaction is, you might have nine different options straight up. And yeah, and each one being hilarious. Some of them are absolutely <laughs> hilarious, but you know, but you know they're immediately hilarious because the literal lines are there on screen. There's no yeah. kind of okay. I want to say something generally positive, generally yeah. sarcastic, generally aggressive. Um, yeah, that's which... it. It's literally written out what you say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, and that's kind of the kind of the crux crux of it as you were in fact in fact depending on again depending on how you talk there might even be more than eight options because there might be ask mm. more questions uh, yeah, among yeah. those eight options that lead you to more and more and there's yeah. like subsections there's just yeah. so and then much origin text. specific options and you know elf specific options class specific options um and then according to your skills as well it's like it's they really addressed almost everything yeah when yeah this game. yeah absolutely uh so that's kind of there's so much kind of there. So yeah, um, continuing on, um, you have a chance to ask people about King Kalen if you don't know, uh, well his guard, his, the people guarding his tent. But if you want to get a bit more background info on him, um, and then you, if you decide, and then um, if you choose chose the persuade skill um, as one of your first skills that you pick up, which you definitely should. Um, yes. The first. <laughs> it's crucial. You do actually get to meet Logan before the first meeting if you talk to his camp, um, and he you get a brief kind of introduction to uh, 
to to him um have a talk with him about his kind of basic beliefs on how the fight is going and all that stuff um so yeah uh and of course the kind of the biggest one um, prior to talking with everyone else before you head into your kind of first mission um wrap up the first mission is the dude in the cage um the prison ah oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> All right, so if you go to the... There is a dude in the cage because he's been... Apparently, he was uh, caught uh, deserting, apparently. Now, he's going to ask you for food. If you're a straight-up goody two-shoes, all right, I'll do my best. I'll get some I'll get some food for you. He gives you... Um, you he gives you an idea of how to get the food. You can talk to him. Great, done. But then again, this, this, specific, this specific quest... Um, tells you like is not is is kind of deceiving and how in depth it can be or how or how wide the choices go because if you decide if you say if you gave him the food great you're done quest is done nice and easy mm. finished mm. if you if you say add say um why why would i do that he mentions he has a key to a major's chest that, that you can use to get items. And that was why he was actually deserted. Uh, if you probe him more. If you want. You can just decide to just. Get the key off him first. And then just ignore him completely. Or even or even just execute him there on the spot as well. Depending on how aggro you want to be. So. That, kind, that one story bit also. Kind of also shows you. Um, if you decide to go into it of course. How many paths or one particular quest you can take in just yeah. something in just something so small? Yeah. Because in just this one small quest about a guy just wanting food because wanting food, you have four potential, you have four potential kind of results. Yeah. Obviously, of course, there's it also kind of teaches you to kind of go explanation um, to kind of exploring because. If you just kind of stick to the main areas, you're not you're gonna miss out on like a bunch of chests and stuff that you're not gonna be able to get um, later. Yeah, yeah, and I think that Origins um, is you know the you know the first of the Dragon Age games. They did that in as many situations as they, as they could. I think like you know they really thought you know how many different ways would someone want to solve this issue like. There are going to be some players you want to just straight up kill him. There are going to be players you just want to feed him and be done with it. There are going to be players who want to investigate and ask, well, why should I help you? And they do this in a lot of different situations. I won't like go into later aspects of the game, but to the point where it's to the detriment of the games later on. Yeah. Um, but this one is like, it's a perfect example of like just the level of thought Bioware has put into the game and every single NPC they created. Yeah, for and, and that's even and that's just for this kind of minor thing there. Um, mm. Now, this one isn't completely this one this kind of little extra thing isn't completely necessary. But Win is here. She's a future yeah. party member. If you decide to have a conversation with her right now, she will remember you when she comes up again. Yeah. So nice little kind of tip there. It's also your chance to learn about um, your primary enemy of the game, um, the Darkspawn. Uh, she'll go if you because if you didn't pay attention or read any of the codexes of the kind of intro or read any of the background about it she'll give you a mm. brief rundown of what supposedly happened to kind of get yeah. there at the time and the codexes are always extra anyway like i love reading through them because and mm. i'm i know you do too because we're being nerds but if you're playing the game casually like they are just extra you will get the story anyway you just might need to pay attention a little bit more or if you're a little bit confused like you know what i mean just flick through them yeah um but it's it's done so well yeah no absolutely um all right so yeah look um actually you also i mean in addition to that if you're as kind of back going back to the whole kind of conversation thing relatively minor relatively minor interaction here if you play the elf and you talk to the merchant he thinks you're the elf that was helping him Oh, <laughs> that was that was essentially his slave or something along those lines. I forget. But, oh, I love that, yeah. and that's an example of the world being so responsive to like the class and the um and so the background that you choose. Yeah, because again, kind of first point, Kalen, 
Uh, Kaylin yeah. inter- kind of interacts with you as a human noble. The merchant interacts with you as an elf. So yeah, there's a there's 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 that kind of info there. So yeah, so after you decide to talk to everything, you recruit Davith, Jory, and Alistair. Your first, at which point you get to see kind of, uh, you get to have a discussion with with a part with your party member, and you get to see kind and another interesting kind of point here. You get this kind of that conversation that you Alistair run into where he's talking to a mage, kind of also actually also guy also kind of teaches you how the world interacts not just with race but just with people and classes of people in general like mm. obviously running up to this everyone doesn't exactly hate the gray ones but they're not they don't exactly like them either but in this particular interaction you get to see how mages are treated um because obviously because the conversation if you after that conversation you get to you you get to learn that alistair is a templar which which if you pay attention to the dialogue after you start talking to him you learn he's a mage hunter essentially like Mm. or jailers if you want to want to go a bit more kind of accurate so kind of interesting there you get introduced to his character just suck just a sweet sarcastic boy (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah very that's that's it like he's very simple but he's very lovable yeah so okay so after you recruit jory davith and alistair um you head back to duncan and he's giving you an assignment to go into the dreaded kokari wilds um mm. both to get darkspawn blood which you're told you need for some sort of ritual that happens to become a full-fledged gray one and then you also need to get um the Grey Warden treaties, which are important to make sure that uh, this dark spawn threat, the blight, is can be contained, and you can get the help needed. Uh, that the help needed that you're gonna to, to contain the threat. Uh, so yeah, you got, and and then so ends the kind of first first kind of section. One last thing, um, not completely necessary, and and not necessary in my origin. You can talk to the kennel master, and he will give you oh, a yeah. side quest to get a white, um, to get a white flower with a red center, um, to because doggos are getting sick. Yeah. Yeah. Now, not necessary because once you get into the Kakari Wilds and you come across one of these flowers, Davith will mention that he's looking for one, so you don't have to get it. Uh, right yeah, they really want you to get that Mabari because Mabari again, it's like a another major part within the Dragon Age universe. No, oh, there. Well, in Ferelden specifically. In Ferelden yeah. specifically, which is, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you go to Gakari Wilds, you get the Darkspawn, you get the Darkspawn blood, you get the, um, you get the flower itself. There's a couple of side quests that you can take, not completely necessary. Yeah. Um, there's like two, I believe. Um, Jeddah's box. There's actually, no, there's three. Uh, essentially, you explore, you explore what you need to, you do the side quests, um, at which point you finally get to this place where the treaties are supposed to be a dilapidated, um, Grey Warden Tower, where mm. you've run into our agreed best girl, Morrigan. Morrigan. We love her. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, we love her. Um, she's kind of a mysterious, kind of, she definitely looks like a mage. Um, <laughs> mage character that's kind of being coy with asking why you're here why you want to be here um davith davith um kind of alludes to the fact that she might be um the witch of the wilds which is kind of like a well-known kind of folklore story i want to say it's folklore yeah yeah about the kokari wilds specifically that there's kind of a witch that kind of lives there um there's obviously a lot of stories we can kind of get into. There's codexes and a bunch of other stuff on that. Um, but you find out that, essentially you find out through talking to Morrigan that her mother, Flemeth, has taken the Grey Warden uh, treaties that you needed. Um, so she takes you to them. She takes you to her. And then, of course, you get this very, you get this very kind of hilarious, I, th- I well, I think hilarious kind of, um, 
interaction with Flemeth, you, Flemeth, you, your party, and Oregon herself. Um, she kind of a, you kind of get. I don't. I don't know about you, but I kind of got the idea. I kind of got the idea even at that point that Flemeth, um, knew a lot more than she kind of led on. Yeah, yeah. She or she just she comes off as this character who's just like, um, incomprehensibly ancient, <laughs> who knows more than we can even understand. Yeah, at like a cursory look. Um, yeah. And especially, especially when I started, the first thing I saw, she just seems like some baddie old lady. Um, but <laughs> to me. Batty old ladies don't live in swamps surrounded by yeah. wolves and darkspawn and all that stuff. So there's yeah. some, there is, you know, there is something going on. Especially, yeah, she's here for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, she, um, and obviously she's a mage. She's obviously because Morrigan is a mage, um, you know, Flemish is a mage. She's apparently been protecting the Grey Warden uh, treaties. Mm, that's right. Um, because the magic had worn off, essentially. So, great. She gives them to you, and she lets you leave. No issue whatsoever. So, you got the treaties. Uh, you got the uh, Darkspawn blood that you need for this so-called ritual. The ritual happens. Um, and oh boy. That's it. That's a whole thing. Yeah, uh, that, that is a... I love that cutscene. I, I think it's yeah. actually, like... Oh, it just, it's a perfect example of, like, like we were discussing before... Duncan is kind of a dickhead. Duncan's kind of a dick. <laughs> we love him, but he's kind of an asshole. Like, this is a perfect example of that. Like, he would sacrifice everything for the cause. Yeah, so, um, just kind of a summary. Obviously, watch it. It is actually kind of... It's... This is how you know you're in a dark fantasy. Yeah. So, the, yeah. Ritual, the ritual is revealed to you as you are supposed to drink this magically kind of enhanced... Or at the very least, seemingly magically enhanced um, darkspawn blood, which you just collected, and doing so will apparently make you a grey warden. Mm. All during this whole time, Jory and Davith are specifically scared um, about what's going on. Well, Jory is more than anyone. Um, yeah, Davith, yeah. Davith is the first to drink it, and he straight up dies. Jory, who is now at this point. Worry, scared about drinking the blood. It draws a sword, draws his sword on Duncan, and saying, "Really desperate not to drink it." But Duncan, who can't let the secret of how the joining works, yeah, runs him through. No attempt at, no attempt at it. I mean, he does say sorry, but yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just murdering you now. <laughs> That makes it better. Yeah. A little thing, I, a little thing, I point, a little thing, I pointed out um, on the stream. It's super minor, but I'm a nitpicker. That during this, um, during this whole interaction, and uh, before the even during the cutscene, he mentions that his wife is in High Ever. Is in where? High Ever. High Ever. Oh is, yeah. Yeah. Now, oh, yes. now keep in mind, the human noble is the tyrant of High Ever. But he never recognizes you, Ooh. so I don't know if that's just a relatively throwaway line. Mm. But it also kind of you also even from that even before that you get the idea that Jory isn't the brightest person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He did. He genuinely comes across across as like honest, a, I, a simple man. Yeah, honestly, probably just a slight kind of miss, but. Just something I want, kind of want, relatively mm. minor. I wanted to point out, um, but yeah, at that point, you just, you just said, "Fuck it, all right, I'll drink it." You succeed. Now, the yeah. obvious, um, you succeed. You, you're apparently in terrible pain. You black out and you wake up to Duncan and Alistair, happy that you've lived through it. Um, side note: It is also at, at this point the Dark. This is where the Darkspawn Chronicles kind of veers off in its branching timeline. In that, yeah. you if you, obviously the Dragon Age Origins is the timeline where you succeed your joining. The Darkspawn Chronicles is what happens when you fail. Now, I did see some kind of minor speculation um, around when originally when the Darkspawn Chronicles came out that um, that your character or kind of your idea was the kind of 
led to the character that's in lit in the Darkspawn Chronicles to become powerful. No kind of real reason, no rhyme or reason to it. Oh. Have Have you played Darkspawn Chronicles? I've played it. But I just I've played it so long ago. I don't remember. Yeah. So obviously, okay. So in the Darkspawn Chronicles, you play you play a particularly powerful uh, Herlock Alpha mm. um, that has the ability oh. to control other Darkspawn. So. I don't know. Yeah. There might be some tie to that, but I sincerely doubt it. Theory. I got nothing kind of backing up that. I just, it's just yeah. something I saw. Uh, but yeah, look, on, ongoing now, at this point, because you survived, um, they want you to go to King Kalen meeting, uh, strategy meeting, for the fight that's happening that night. Uh, because at this point, the entire time, it's day after this ritual. Or once this ritual happens, it is now in the evening. This is also your last opportunity to, to sell anything mm. or get the stuff in the mage chest if you ended up yeah. doing it. Although, because uh, after this is inaccessible, you go to the meeting, you get kind of you get kind of hints that Logan is an old man sitting in his ways. He kind yeah. it's a very foreshadowy. <clears throat> yeah, he, he's um he's quite a complex character, I think. He absolutely like he, he's, is. He's one of those characters that, like, similar to a lot of Dragon Age characters, they are they appear to be stereotyped in a certain way mm. when there's actually a lot more to their um their motivations and yeah. their personality than what you originally think yeah absolutely so you get the whole meeting essentially uh Kaylin and the main gray warden forces are just gonna clash immediately and clash with the dark spawn that's coming up and then you and alistair um the two remaining surviving members plus your doggo um uh, are going are going to go out for the Tower of Ishal. Uh, to light to light the tower so Logan can flank them. And hopefully that wipes out wipes out the horde that's there. Mm. Okay, so mission starts. Um you mission starts essentially. You there's a awesome cutscene of um every of the army itself kind of preparing for the fight you see the dark spawns coming through the forest yeah it's oh it's done it's actually really well. yeah like to say what you want I mean, the game is old for, i think i believe it was released back in oh, 2009 that yeah. cut scene is still really good I, it is beautiful it's so eerie as well it's it's so good um perfect for the kind of dark fantasy um yeah for the fantasy thing they're setting up so after that um after that cutscene plays um, you go through the Tower of Shal only to find that the Darkspawn have taken a into a tower. Which is not good. You need to be up there mm. to light it. Mm. So, uh, so if you have the Doggo at this point, uh, which you only really would if you have the Dwarven Noble. Because, yeah. okay, so, sorry. The hum because yeah, yeah, as, no, a human human noble, noble. Is, yeah. as a human noble, this party, I have me... Alistair, a mage, and the dog. I do believe yeah. if if you play the if you play if you play anything else, you have your character, Alistair, the guard that you go with, and the mage. Yeah, yeah, a rogue and a mage. I'm pretty a sure. Rogue and a mage. Yes. Yeah. Well, you'd have to have a rogue just in case. Yeah. So, yeah, you fight through the Tower of Ishal. You there is like a crazy amount of uh, dark spawn that's there, so you fight all the way through it. Um, all the. Um, there's kind of a couple of different things there, um, but essentially it gets to the point where you reach the top of the tower, and you fight, and you get an idea of the first boss fight um, of your game. That being the ogre. Yeah. Oh, that's a good battle. I like that one. I like that one. That's that's actually quite satisfying. No, it's really satisfying. It's just because it teaches you kind of unique things, right? Because the rest of the the rest of the enemies um, are just standard attacking you yeah They're, exactly if, if you if you come across an emissary they'll cast some magic yeah um but the ogre... when you got to pay a lot more to the environment i'm pretty sure from memory yeah and the, obviously uh, yeah i just saw you um it, it even the first kind of entrance to the tower teaches you how environmental environmental yeah. combinations and all that stuff yeah um because again that first entrance if you you trap 
you trip a, uh, a trap essentially that puts oil on the floor and then the emissary casts a fire cast fireball on you so yeah now you have now the ground's on fire so if you walk through it you take damage and a bunch of other things it teaches you to use the environments around you teaches about spell combinations if you're a mage in yeah. fact they give you a mage specifically so you can try that if you don't have one if you're not yeah. the mage class so it's it teaches you like how the standard essentially dungeon in dragon age works um but yeah getting back to kind of getting back to the boss fight it teaches you like the boss fights are, are like really different it's not just like a, essentially like a bullet sponge it's just not like a giant dude with big swings and has a bunch of health there he has moves that stun you he has aoe moves um yeah. the biggest one if you're not careful that that might tear up your party is his grab that's it yeah, he yeah, will yeah. grab oh you he will grab a character <clears throat> nearby and if you don't stun him or or use a, or use a spell or a skill that stuns him or knocks him, or supposed to knock him down the character he grabs is dead yeah straight up dead. i think that's fantastic <laughs> which is good which is great it teaches you like yeah. the importance the importance of like planning out your skills yeah absolutely i think yeah and and like if we think about it like it's fantastic that it's they didn't like and my issue with a lot of games sometimes is that they throw everything in right at the beginning and you're expected to <clears throat> remember all this information and my brain's not good my brain hardly works half the time i don't remember half this stuff my, what i love so much about origins is that this is like how many hours in like you know a couple hours in now and they're just getting to those you know, you need to be aware of the environment. You need to be aware of the special moves that you, the bosses might have. Um, so it really eases you into what Dragon Age wants you to play as. Um, and, like, like, you know, gently prompts you to um, change how you're playing if you if all you're used to is just standing there and hitting an enemy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, maybe the ogre was enough of a threat to you that you decide, you know what, I want my main character, who is always going to be the most powerful character in your party, right? Mm. Maybe you want him to be a mage. And you know what? Because you haven't you played through maybe one, maybe two hours. Yeah. A perfect opportunity to kind of switch it up. Because yeah. they give you they give you every chance. They give you kind of every bit of chance um, to kind of switch yeah, it up. Yeah, to try early different on. classes Bef as well. Yeah, before you get onto the main story. Um, yeah. But yeah, look, that's us. But that's kind of how it will be uh that's kind of good at, um you know so um if you finish him off with a melee melee fighter you oh, do get that's the, cool you do get the special kind of finisher on there do you recommend that it's so good I, I, yeah. I legitimately would recommend you put you put the mage so far away from the ogre that it doesn't attack <laughs> yeah. that he, yeah. he's out of range to attack get everybody else to go and just have your main dude or Alice there yeah. because he's uh, he's obviously worried just to completely yeah. wreck do this cinematic. I mean, kill. don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. It's it's so cool, but you do get sick of it at the end. Kills a oh, look, it kills <laughs> yeah. a kill, it kills a kill. So yeah. like, obviously, if you're kind of right on the edge of it, you don't have to, but it's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, explore around and then you light the fire. Um, you light the fire after having succeeded. A cutscene plays. You see the you see the tower lit up. You see Log Logain sees it, and instead of ordering a charge, he orders a retreat. Mm. We now have your main villain. This guy has no. left the king and left the Grey Wardens for dead. The, uh, so after he leaves, the rest of the cutscene plays. You see Duncan and King Caelan dead again to another ogre which is brilliant it's like it's completely brilliant on how they how threatening they made the ogre yeah yeah because he literally just the ogre just swats away everything and then just crushes like king caitlin oh, in his hand so you know they're definitely dead <laughs> yeah he's definitely dead and then you also get the cutscene is also great because you also get this one great moment of how how why the Grey Wardens are the Grey Wardens because Duncan decides to do some ice map like mountain scaling, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is like it, it's cool, great, yeah. It, it the Grey Wardens are just specialists in killing Darkspawn, yeah. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't do quite a, that doesn't do quite enough. Everyone's wiped, no. everyone's wiped out. 
and then you see kind of a short scene where you guys are wiped out. You're, yeah. You're specifically you and Alistair. But you pass out, you wake up, you wake up to Morrigan. At this point, you're just asking, what's happening? What's going on? You get to ask Morrigan about what's happened since. Essentially, um, obviously, you're, you're going to talk more, but Morrigan tells you that Flemeth rescued you. You don't yeah. know exactly why. You don't know exactly yeah. how. Um, because everything seemed to be like in a really bad spot. And this is a kind of another foreboding of how powerful, powerful Flemeth Flemeth seems to be. Mm-hmm. Because you rescued from the seemingly possible. You go outside after you're done talking to Morrigan. You talk to Flemeth. Um, she convinces you and Alistair to kind of take up arms. Um, despite how apprehensive remember. you may be. I can't remember. Do they reveal here that Loghain is accusing the Grey Wardens of having betrayed? That happens yeah. right up. That happens right after right this. Right after. Yeah. yeah. So essentially she convinces you to. Even if your character... Even if you decide that, you know, you don't want to mess with this anymore, you're done. Yeah. Oh, all that stuff. No, she convinces you and Alistair to kind of take up yeah. take up the cause. Yeah. And then, She's always got interesting motivations. <laughs> yeah. And then Mob essentially convinces Morrigan to join you. So you now have a you now you you if you're the human noble, you now have a full party. You, Alistair, Morrigan, Doggo. Now, yeah. once you leave, once now, once you leave um, Flemeth's hut, you decide to head to Lothering. Now, if you're not the human noble, before you get to Lothering, you do get a short cutscene from the doggo that you if, saved. Yeah, if you did the quest, if, if you, you did, did the, the quest, quest if you did the quest, it. you get a short cutscene about the dog finding you. He'd be really happy to see you. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where you get the dog. If you if you go through the, if you go through with that. Yeah. So yeah, um, then you get to Lothering. Um, you fa- and this is you get, and then you meet the Toll Collectors. The Toll Collectors is also your first, oh, also yeah. your first, your first interaction where your the, your dialogue can lead to violence. So mm. another introduction to something kind of relatively new because if you can talk your way out of it or if you want to pay it, great, you're good. That's like, if if you decide refuse to pay, it, they fight you. At one point, the, if you to get the boss down low enough, he says he surrenders. At which point, you can either let him go, or kill him. Yeah, which um is this one where they where we are able to we're introduced essentially to approval and disapproval in terms of companions i do uh i do believe this is or is that later on with the merchant that's a slightly later on but Mm. essentially this bit this kind of interaction here is um you talking about how your actions can lead to consequences like your actions lead to fights if needed because prior to this you're all allies there's no way a fight is breaking out you're about to fight a thing you so it gets you it gets you out of the idea that just talking is safe. So you continue on. At this point, you learn um, you get introduced to loathering, which again, while the first kind of few sections teaches you about how the world interacts with you, it teaches you about the basic mechanics of the game. Loathering actually teaches you how to play the game. Yeah. This is Dragon Age kind of. In a unit, in in kind of encapsulated into one um, yeah. thing, essentially, because you'll have you have you have items to pick up. Um, you have you ha- you got the, you got the merchant the merchant thing um, where she's talking about um, where she's talking how this merchant is overcharging people. That teaches you. That teaches you. That is the first conversation. If you decide to go there, that teaches you um, regards to approval and how conversations don't necessarily revolve around you. You, the the world is going on without mm. you. This is this interaction. Well, also gives you a bunch of different options on how you want to deal with it. Do you help the merchant? Do you help? Do you help the? Um, do you help on help the Chantry uh, or the Dorivian mother? I believe that is kind of helping you there. Um, 
do you get it also teaches you the persuade again how important persuade is because if you have persuasion you find the middle ground so it teaches you the kind of the results of how conversations can go yeah uh and then of course if you continue on you get introduced to the chantry uh which you're told is basically a kind of like church and there's like a church board with your bounty boards essentially it teaches you how that works um if as you continue on um there's also like an elf family uh there's also an elf family that is a bit poor that is a bit poor again not too relevant but teaches you how that you can solve this uh, this people's to a positive or negative result or ignore them entirely if you want to Mm. um they're kind of there's one thing i kind of want to specifically talk about as well there is a woman that gives you that you talk to that asks you if you know anything about traps yeah 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 now traps uh if you don't have the trap skill you cannot continue this conversation if you do she gives you a quest to create some traps and that's that's it you that's yeah. it's relatively minor but the it, it just kind of that's that's a nice little thing to teach you that hey depending on what you may have what you level some stuff might be open to you that normally isn't yeah but i always found that weird like in terms of like a narrative as if like i couldn't come back to her and be like hey i can uh, i can help you with those traps now like you just can't get that quest i always found that yeah. super bizarre and really frustrating because i always forgot about it yeah <laughs> but there's also someone who asks about poison making as well yes so this game um there is the merchant inside the inn mm. um wait you, well you meet lily well you meet liliana for the first time yes yes um uh Actually, the, before we even get to the kind of the poison thing, you meet Liliana. She has a whole interesting thing. Um, but before that, you get into a fight with apparently low gain soldiers, who, who from oh, who yeah, you've yeah, learned yeah. is now that you have grey now the grey ones have a bounty <clears throat> on them. But here's the thing that I find weird: this guy said he was there at the Battle of Ostagar, and he saw the, and he saw that we were leading them into a trap or something. Now. It might just because I'm I'm reading too much into it, um, but I fo- I found that particularly a weird conversation because we were there, we saw the cutscenes about it. He seems to deny the reality of the situation, as it were. I don't know if he's just, if he was actually there or if he was just lying about it, believing Logan. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of a side. You fight. He sends you send him on the way, Liliana. You have a discussion with Liliana where you learn a little bit more about the religion of the game, where God, the maker, uh, they're taught that the he's abandoned this world. But for some reason, Liliana can hear Lily. He Liliana believes she, the maker, specifically tells her that she what the the that God, the maker, wants her to help him. You yeah. And she had that strange which leads into which considering events later on in the game is really interesting as to um it's really interesting about the kind of the truth of that because there's a choice that you can make that leads to a couple of different questions in the later games i'll t- if you want uh, if you if them if you're really curious i'll tell you about it mm-hmm. later on um but we're not going to discuss that here um, either way it's an interesting conversation to have so yep if you decide to let her um right then and there she joins your party because you do have a couple of you do have like two or three points of contact with liliana if you decide not to recruit her then and there uh yeah but back onto the back onto the kind of the poison quest it teaches you that anybody can give you a quest because the person that gives it to you is the merchant of the inn just hmm. so merchants aren't purely merchants they're genuine people that want to do some stuff but yeah oh, at this point because of that and because of the trap quest it teaches you crafting uh so yeah if you, if you decide to do some side quests and everything you come across sten um sten is seemingly just a normal tall dude but you later you through if you decide yeah. to have a conversation with him um 
he you find out that he's a canary he's supposed to be like this giant uh, a giant race essentially and he tells you why he's in prison he's not he is not lying or anything yeah. he is very yeah. blunt about what he did yeah he is <laughs> Which is I love which, that. Which is interesting because you think this just might be a character flaw or it just might be kind of a literal just him being him, but you realize that's just the Kunari race. And again, because yeah. we play Dragon Age, um, past origins, we get to see what Kunari en- end up looking like. And yeah, then just... there's there's a kind of there's a retcon essentially that decide that kind of decides why Stan looks the way he does. Yeah, because because um, in origins, somehow. in origins, he look he's just a normal, just tall dude. Yeah, that's it. Dragon Age Two onwards, the Kunari are nuts, and I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good honestly, it's a good change. Um, and I wish that I, I wish that they could remake Origins to how they have decided the universe looks like. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? Um, okay, let's not kind of sugarcoat it, um, because obviously if you search Kunari, it looks very different. Kunaris are supposed to be giant grey, mostly, mostly grey, um, yeah. dudes with horns. Now, yeah. Sten is seemingly just like, um, a person, oh, like a, a black guy essentially with no horns yeah. whatsoever. He just looks normal. Why, why, and why this is? And why? And why? What's the big change now? The retcon actually is that uh, Sten specifically is a is born hornless. He, on a rare occasion, Kunari are born hornless, and in those cases, they are sent as um, I believe what the um, I forget what it was. Um, I can't remember either. I think essentially like spies. They they're essentially spies. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, essentially, they're essentially spies sent out spies because they can pass as human. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, all right. So kind of um, moving on for Sen, he said, um, he's he's you can convince him to say, hey, look, I will join you if you can convince the the chantry, the revered mother, essentially the head priest um, at the at the church, uh, to let him. Th- yeah. Yeah. So if you want, you can do some side quests here, clean up some bandits, kill some bears, all that stuff. Um, kill a lot of wolves for some reason. Um, it teaches you how the side quests work. Um, you know, there's also a kind of an interesting when you head out of Lothring for the first time, you run into a bunch of villagers, so yeah. you get an idea of how big battles can get. Because that's always interesting. There's like yeah. there's like twenty of those guys. Yeah. So it teaches you kind of the importance of AOE, and mm. also. Also teaches you that that like even if you guys are in the right, people don't care. Like, even yeah. people don't know you're grey wardens. There's a bounty on your head. Even if they don't care, they will try to get it. You and you now know that your position is in no way safe because this can happen at any point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so kind of continuing on from that, you do a bunch of things. Um, now, all of which kind of culminate in you going back to the church. Well, if you want to, you, uh, now, there's actually a couple of, di- there's a couple of different ways, uh, once you get to the Revered Mother, to discuss um, how to get Sten out. The first one is the easiest one, Liliana. If you've recruited Liliana at this point, she will convince the Revered Mother uh, that you that to give Sten to you essentially. No, the second option is there is like a persuasion a persuasion dialogue. If you go through a certain path on how your conversations are, you can convince yeah. her to release him to you, or you can just do the intimidate. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, after that, Sten releases you. Uh, you release Sten, I should say. You have one final Darkspawn fight before that wraps up all of Lothering. And you head to your first night in camp. Um, let's, let's talk, about, talk about camp too much though. So look, that's kind of like the first section of our game. Oh, Dragon Age Origins, I should say. So very, I think um, overall as an experience, while it may not be great and kind of boring, admittedly, um, I think it's important. 
I think it's kind of like a good almost tutorial, as it were. I agree. Yeah, it's like a tutorial in three different areas. It's yeah, fantastic. It kind of ease you into a a lot yeah. of things overall. Um, but yeah, definitely. But yeah, I mean, how did you like kind of how how did you like each section of the game? I mean, first first and foremost, how how did you like the how do you like the origin setup? Especially comparing it to the Legend of Dragon Age games. I miss that. I think that Origins did it just so well, like setting up these unique or, um, origin stories um, that, you know, like we were speaking about, had, you know, responsive, um, you know, very responsive world in regards to the origin that you chose. Um, and I think that, like, this is just, this game is honestly a masterpiece in how well it sets up um, the whole, you know, um, unique background. It's like they were trying to go for a Dungeons and Dragons game, but they were stuck within the parameters of, you know, programming within a video game. Yeah. It's like, it's that, I honestly think it's that unique. Um, yeah, I, th I think this game, like, the, the beginning is really strong and it gets you really, like, intrigued, like, you want to learn more about these companions and at this point you're like well i like that companion so you know you, you know you get a little attached to them because they've got such beautiful personalities yeah it's a fantastic one yeah i um, look i'm personally a huge again i'm personally a huge fan of the origins because it gives you kind of like a point of investment into yeah. the game and the storyline right um yeah. it gives you like a solid motivation to go on this journey and yeah, yeah. um kind of gets you invested into the story of the game itself now um and that's a that's a major problem i have with um but the late bethesda 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 games specifically yes so you have fallout to make 3 skyrim oblivion like i played i played all of those um but once you do kind of your little your little origin story you just sent out in the world and just say here do something which is great for yeah. some people which is great for some people don't get me wrong um but i tend to for me as a story based gamer like i play games to get into story there's no motivation there for, for me to kind of get into yeah. it that's what origins provides for me it gives me a direct yeah. storyline um and direct kind of character motivations even to kind of get um to kind of get it to kind of get into the game um but yeah what about the kind of the rest uh the rest of the game um Osigar and Lothering, how how did you did you how how did you like that i yeah like i think like like we were saying like i think that like it's um it's again really incredibly strong like you just i love stories where you're thrown in without knowing what's going to happen you think oh but we're in the final battle i don't understand like why is this at the beginning of the game and then it all turns to shit like i think that's really really strong storytelling like you are introduced to all these different characters into this you know it's going to be the final battle we're going to defeat this big you know enemy and then your mentor dies and then the king of the um entire country is killed and oh no the bad guys are actually going to win if we don't do something to stop it i think it's just like in terms of storytelling dragon age origins is incredible and then the whole area in Lothering like I think it's like I think honestly think it's a little bit of filler um but you get the, those other companions and again it's more of a tutorial so you're introduced to you know skills and you know dialogue and all these you know approval and disapproval and then you know it all wraps up nicely at the end with day in the camp it's like a little interlude before you move on to the next part so yeah yeah, I think I mean I'll, I'll admit I'm not a huge fan of Lothering myself. Um, in fact, I've had numerous conversations with a friend of mine, um, a person that we both know, who who could who despised Lothering so much he never got past Origins, despite <laughs> being a huge Bioware fan himself. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I don't blame him for that. Um, it is yeah. It is kind of. It is kind of a little bit bog standard, as it were. Yeah. But I think it's kind of like a necessary evil. Um, kind of I on agree. The, kind of on the idea, on the, back onto the whole thing in Nosaga. Um, my, my most important, my most important kind of takeaway from that is just that this isn't kind of like a fairy tale. You are straight up, you can lose. Yeah. At any point. You, yeah. It's like, and that's fine, and that's kind of great. 
And that's kind of like how I like the idea of it. Now, there is something something I actually skipped over. So in addition to the cutscene with Doggo, you need to get that. Before you get to Lothering, or I believe sometime, or even sometimes kind of before or after that, there is a cutscene of Loghain. You do get to see a cutscene of short, short cutscene of Loghain attempting to kind of corral, um, kind of uh. motivate the rest of... Um, the Ferelden government, essentially, uh, the Banorn, as it were, because yeah, Ferelden, um, essentially, essentially, it's essentially the United States. There's a bunch of like, each each kind of ter- bit of territory is ruled by a Ban, which is a lord, essentially, lord of that area, and the Banorn is just a collection of those lords, which all kind of go up to the king. It's very much. It's almost. It's almost democratic. It's getting close. I think it's close. I think it's getting really close to like. I forget what the English um, system is, the UK kind of system of governance is, but um, but yeah, essentially, I don't know. It's really funny considering considering the current political climate in the US. Lo- after yeah. watching this cutscene again, <laughs> Logan is coming out very Trump. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> he, spout- he, he, he just spouts a lot of rhetoric. Um, just like, we need to come together about this dark spawn threat. There's all this stuff going on. Like we need to band together. We need to go save, you know, follow the queen and all that stuff. But it's very, it's made very clear that not everyone is a fan. And they, this is not an absolute monarchy. It teach uh, where mm-hmm. you, the king decides everything. This is there's a government here. Yeah. And yeah, you can tell like despite Logan being the general of this army, somehow related to the queen. Uh, for some reason or another, not everyone likes him. Like, um, uh, Bantesian, uh, which you'll meet later on, uh, makes a specific note to point out that Loghain retreated. And then there was this, and then there was like an oh shit kind of moment that happens with the rest of the Barn on. Um, yeah. So, it's made clear, it's made clear that the political system is. Again, not an absolute monarchy. Not everyone's a fan of Loghain, despite him being in this super high position. Um, yeah. And it also, it also kind of teaches you that not everyone is just going to follow the law. In, in God, what they're supposed to do. So, yeah. I think, I think this first section of the game is really important. As boring as it may be. Um, without, with the origin sections cut out, of course. Yeah. It teaches you a lot if you're paying attention. But yeah. then but then again, I and you, to I think and it's one of those And it's one of those things that um I think you might appre- like it's one of those things that you probably appreciated a little bit more having finished the game. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of it comes from the fact that n- now you're saying okay, you get these little obviously on your first playthrough, okay it's some sort of government this is how yeah, you yeah. basically play the game um yeah there's a kind of a there's kind of a lot to that oh these are just side quests yeah fine whatever um uh, once you kind of go back to it and kind of over analyze it play it as much times as i have and well not so much as much as i have <laughs> let's just say that um, yeah <laughs> you realize the kind of the small steps they take to kind of introduce things um choice in game design so um I'm just kind of uh, as much as I might not, I might I might not like playing through it because I optimize the hell out of it and run that ran that ran that place through as quickly as possible. Um, I appreciate. Mm. It. Yeah. All right, um, any kind of wanna any kind of um, uh, kind of last words on uh, the first section uh, of the game. No, I've, I've got nothing else to say about it. I, yeah, I totally agree with everything you said. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, all right, so we'll just kind of leave that there for now. Um, in the next section, in the next section, we're going to be playing through the Tower of Magi, which um, at this point, you actually do have a couple of different options on where you want to go um, because the, sp- the treaties in that conversation you had with Morrigan and Flemeth, you found out they can get help from the Tower of Mage, the Mages, the Elves, the Dwarfs, and it's also been made, uh, also been made known that you, you can contact Art Eamon for human support. Essentially, um, there is kind of an optimized playthrough, uh, which, 
uh, which is kind of explained essentially on the wiki, and it's also the um, the way I went through it, and I st- which I honestly also think is the optimal playthrough. Again, the f- that being first the Tower of Magi. So we'll play through that. I of course will be streaming it, so you guys can watch along, and then um, we'll ha- we'll have the next podcast up next week as well, talking about that too. Fantastic. Right. Great. Uh, thank thank you guys for watching. Sorry, I got the kind of basic setup of this, but yeah, you know, we knew. All right. We'll get into the the real juicy stuff later. Yes. Thanks. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.